All right, okay. so we are back with another tutorial. I actually have Jaren and Jason. Uh, guys, say hi real quick. Hello. Hello. Yay. It captures your audio. Okay, so uh, is what we're doing with this tutorial is we have a slider bar that we want to access the in-game music and have it adjust the volume. So the way we're going to do this is I've created a music script class right here. I've gotten rid of all the crap in the middle because you all know how I feel about that. We're going to say using Unity engine.ui because a slider is a type of UI class. So we're going to say serialize field because the first thing we need to do is call the slider and we're going to say slider and we'll just call this um, slider volume if I can type. So is what we want to do is inside of update we actually want to see how much we're adjusting this. Now we could call it uh, through another method group and have it do it that way but just for simple easy purposes this is why I'm going to do it so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, we also need an audio source we need to call the audio source now that I think about it, so we need to say serialize field we'll say audio source we'll just call this uh, music audio so we need to start and then we're going to say music audio equals music audio dot what are we doing Jaren, Jason. Sorry. So we're calling the audio source because we're going to be editing that directly. So what do we need to do with it? Mm. We need to get a component. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the component type that we are getting? Uh, just the audio. Okay, well, let's type in audio and see what happens. The audio source. There you go. That's yeah. what we need. So anytime you are getting a component of anything, you need to make sure that you're getting the component type. In this case, we're calling music audio, which is the variable name that we have given it. And we are getting the component of what type? In this case, audio source. And so from there is what we can do is we can actually say music audio dot volume equals slider volume dot value so is what we are doing right here is we're saying okay your volume right here is going to equal this slider value now the volume on the audio sources works as a float so it's a value between zero and one just as a slider works as a float with a value between zero and one as you can see so if I set this to point three six nine and uh, I actually need to come down here to game music because we actually need to add this script to this. So we have a slider and we have the audio source. Well, the game music already has the audio source component in it, so I can just drag it where the audio source is at. And I can take the slider right here that I created and drag this in here. So now when I hit play, we should actually be able to watch this volume change according to how much I'm moving the slider. <laughs> So, you can, I know you guys can't hear it, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this over here, and you can see like right now it's right between uh, 4, 5, and 4, and if I come back into Unity and I grab this and move it up, and I bring this back up, you can see that now it is between 5 and 2, so it's mm -hmm. definitely, it's definitely doing what we want it to do. Now, right now it's not because I have loop off. It just says uh, set play on awake. But that is the way that you'll actually set up uh, audio sliders and slider bars. Mm -hmm. Now, is what another way that we could do this is because update is calling it every single frame. It is checking it every single frame. And that's actually kind of not very well optimized. You could actually create a public group or method group and have it called that way. Uh, the way I normally do it is I'll actually create private float and this will be called old music volume and we'll have a new music volume. So the way I do this is I will say if uh, new music volume does not equal old music volume 
then we do this stuff here in the middle. And so after that, uh, we will say that the audio source of this will be the slider dot value. And mm -hmm. then we will say new music volume will equal slider volume dot value. So now we are taking this float and we're assigning it this slider volume dot value. Now you could also come in here and say uh, slider volume dot value as well. And so as long as the new music volume does not equal this, then it will change it to this. And the advantage of doing this, uh, in fact, we don't even need old music volume. So this is actually a little bit better. But the advantage of doing this is uh, it's going to check to see if these are the same. And if they are the same, then it'll completely skip over it. And so gotcha. just adding that one little line is a little bit more optimized. And if we come in here and test it, we should see that it is indeed still working. So we wait for that to compile, hit play. And there we go. So that's how you create a slider value that will uh, communicate with an audio source. Gotcha. Any now, questions? Do you keep it on plan awake or do you put something in the script that will just turn it on whenever you go to that scene? So that's actually a really good question. Um, I mean, that is actually an excellent question. The thing that I need to create now that you bring it up is I will actually need to create a script that will keep the music playing even between scenes. And gotcha. because it right, keeps the loop going. right. Because right now is what's going to happen is you could be halfway through the song. And when you go into a new scene, you're going to hear it restart every single time. Yeah. So uh, much like how I have the game manager set up is what will happen is when you go into a new scene, uh, it's not going to destroy it on loading. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll actually keep it playing all the way through. Gotcha. Now, the time that we will uh, have play on Awake will be uh, whenever you go from, like, Lively Forest to, say, Ice Caverns or the Deadwoods or something like that. Mm -hmm. We will want to stop using the uh, audio component of that area and use a different compo component audio of the other area. And then we'll just loop that music back to itself. But this is actually kind of important because uh, if y'all remember what I was showing you yesterday, the average scene transition should only be around 30 seconds, mm -hmm. uh, considering this is a Metroidvania. And so we don't want the player to hear the intro music and have to wait for it to go into the game loop. It should start off with the intro music and then end up with the game loop. So do you know how to do that? Um, that's what I was trying to figure out. Because you had two different ones, so I was like... Okay, so in this, this case, we're going to... Start this, keep that moving. So this is 24.38. Uh, mm -hmm. We can actually do a coroutine and say, hey, wait for this many seconds. But then the issue that we're going to have is that it will... Uh, trying to think is... The issue that we're going to have with that is it won't... I'm trying to think how to explain this. Like, we could do a coroutine and do it all that way and create public variables, but it's going to be kind of hard specifying it to set to this time. Mm. <clears throat> so, what I mean by that is this is 24.380. So, I'm actually going to uh, do a start coroutine, and I'm just going to call this music switch wait and that because we are doing this uh, we also need to specify serialized field this will be called audio what audio source nope we're already calling audio source oh um I think 
It's a music clip we're playing, right? Yeah. And we need to swap the clips out. So we're going to call, if Add. I can spell, audio clip. And this will be called intro music, loop music. So for the start, we're actually going to say um, music audio dot clip will equal intro music. And then uh, we're actually going to have music audio dot play. And that is a method group, so we need parentheses. So it's going to play this. And then uh, is what we're going to do is we're going to have I enumerator because we're calling a start coroutine when you call this music switch wait so in here is what we need to do is we need to say yield return new wait for seconds and uh, I'm actually gonna set this to real time so the difference between wait for seconds and wait for seconds real time if it's wait for seconds and someone presses escape and it sets the time scale to zero, meaning the game is paused, yeah. it will still be playing the music, but it's also going to stop that counter on the wait for seconds. If you add real time to that, it doesn't matter what the time scale is. It will actually look at the real time scale of what is playing. And yeah. so I'm actually going to create a public float, and this will be called uh, music time switch. And so I'm going to take that, I'm going to paste it in here. And then is what we will do is we will say, if I can throw my semicolon out there, then is what we're going to do is we're going to say music audio dot clip equals loop music. And we're going to say music audio dot play. The reason why we're playing because right now it's not looping. It's not set to loop. So how do we set it to loop in here? I'm not sure. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, so we know that this is an audio source called that we're calling music audio, right? So we're going to say music yeah. audio. Now we need to get a subcomponent. Well, what are some of the subcomponents that we have for this? So if we look at it, we see loop. And that is a bool. So if we come in here and say loop equals true, that's how we set it to loop way easier than I thought. Oh yeah. So now we have the end game loop and it's not set to loop and I'm actually going to click on my slider and I'm going to lower this because that music is really loud. I'm going to set right down there. I'm going to keep it on game music so we need the end game loop which is right here. We need end game intro which is right here. Now the end game intro is 24.38 So I need to come down here. I need to put in 24.38. So uh, we have to wait for 24 seconds for it to actually go through the loop. And I'm actually going to bring this window back over here with OBS so you can actually see the desktop audio playing in the background. Because I know you guys can't hear it when it's playing. Yeah. So we'll hit play. I'm actually going to scroll up inside the inspector once it starts playing. So right now it's playing the end game intro. And we can see that it is playing. <clears throat> Actually, that was really, really smooth. That was way smoother than I thought it would be. I really thought that I'd hear like a pause, but I didn't hear that at all. So I'm actually really impressed by that. But as you can see, it also set loop to true. And so yeah. now whenever it plays the entire track, it'll just keep looping back on itself. And if you look at the desktop, uh, you'll see that it's continuously playing. And I can kind of hear where it's looping, but that's not because of the music that's playing. That's actually because of the way I set the music tracks up. Which that's something I could actually hear inside the other program itself. 
but other than that um you can see it's still playing the in-game loop it was smooth it was consistent it switched right over we have zero issues doing it that way so actually if you want to set it up that way you can you can also do a check to see if the soundtrack is finished and then immediately start playing the next one you could also do it that way where it'll do it on the same frame either way works okay hmm. Come on, now you got questions. I'm trying to think. Um, so, even though this is made in the metric scene here, well, I just use the same slider over on a main menu scene. Yeah, so, so um, that'll just keep running. You can literally just create a script or a slider on inside the main menu because I'm actually going to delete this and the game music down here but you will have my music script so let me go ahead and upload that to perforce real quick refresh oh well, i put this in sounds music script there we go submit Okay, there you go. So you should have my music script now. Okay. Now, I will need to edit the crap out of that later on, because like I said, going from scene to scene, um, we're going to need to make sure that everything is set correctly, because right now, yeah. it's going to restart the song every time you start a new scene. So that's all going to be on me, because that's development level stuff. Joy. But I should be able to have that done tonight. Okay. Um, let me think. So, for something like how it would play the in-game music. Then when you die, will it just keep that music playing? And then once you hit restart, it'll just start from the beginning again? Or will it just keep the same music playing the whole way? <clears throat> so if you hit restart... Um, will it keep the loop going? Or I gotta think about this for a second. Uh, it really depends yeah. on how I have it set up. In theory... In theory, because it's still the same area, it should keep that same loop going. The only thing that we may want to do is you may want to call the, either you can call the player movement script and get the health, or I can call the music script and tell it to change it to this track. Because I think is what we need to do is we actually need to add a death music to it. Dog, you are annoying. You're cute, but you're annoying. So, did y'all ever play uh, Shinball 3 for the Sega Genesis? I have not. Okay, I didn't think Me so. I've um, never even heard of it, actually. Wow, I'm old. Okay, so, <laughs> the music was like, it was kind of high-paced. It was action because, you know, you're a ninja. Um, but, while you were playing, it's like, you know, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. You know, it's like high, it's like pumping you up. But yeah. then, whenever you die, it's like, dun dun Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's like real soft, like, yeah, you screwed up, you're dead. It's it's over. <laughs> yeah. So I think we definitely need to, or me specifically, I need to create another clip. Doc, I just put you on the ground and you jump right back up on me. You're an asshole. But um, I think I need to create another clip and do something real similar to that. And we need to call that in the, between the either the music script or the player. And so this way, yes, it will have to restart on the loop. But uh, I think that would be something that would be really interesting to add. Probably de Definitely something to add later on down the road. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then the other thing we still need, I think we still need sounds for everything else. Um, Jason, what, what, are, what are your tasks? 
So, yeah. enemy patrol designated area, I already told you how to do that. Enemy will attack if the player enters AI zone. I've already done that through the enemy damager script. Player will take damage upon contact with the enemy as well as get knocked back. I've already done that. I did that last week. Yep. Uh, yeah, sprite I'm just sprite trying to get it to work on the frog. That's all. Uh, the frog, you can literally just bring up the prefab and walk close to him. He'll attack to you. Or are you talking about having it where he'll patrol? Uh, I've got to set the patrol, which I haven't done yet, but I'm just trying, right now, I was trying just to get the attack to work after I saw it work for you. Yeah, literally just drag in and walk close to him. So maybe that's the issue. I don't know that I'm using a prefab, so I guess that... Yes, use the prefab I have in there. Uh, prefabs, enemies, and then you'll see four of them in there. And the frog yeah. is one of them. So let's try it this time around. All right, so options in the pause and main menu. Jaron, I know you're still working on that. Uh, adjust sound effects and background. So for adjusting sound effects, uh, you're actually going to... Let me go ahead and create empty. Or actually, let me go ahead and collapse this and just create an empty right here. So this is going to be called sound effects. So... Right now, we only have one sound effect, and that's being emitted from the player. Mm -hmm. You need to get all those sound effects in here. Like, this will have to call all the sound effects. Do you know how to do that? Um, we just go through the same thing where... No. It goes through the audio clips? Or no? no. This is a little bit more complicated, because with the music script... <clears throat> with a music script you're only calling oh sorry Iggy. you're only calling one audio source for the sound effect scripts you're having to call all of the audio sources so if I open this up if I open this up there we go <laughs> um, we'll still have to do the same thing we need to call audio source but this is where it's different boom Let's just call it SFX Audio. So I'm going to say start for int i equals zero, because this is going to be an array. i is less than SFX Audio dot length. Then we'll say i plus plus. And so we're actually going to say FX dot Audio i equals SFX i. Okay, guys, what else do I need to type? <laughs> Come on, we just went through this. The first uh, thing I need to do, because I need to get... Do what? Audio source? <clears throat> i got to type an audio source. Uh, it's not even coming up, guys. All right, so that's not it. <laughs> I need to get the uh, component uh, first. Oh, yeah. Component type is what? Audio source. There you go. Audio source. So now I'm getting the audio source. In fact, we don't even need these swirly brackets. But I do need something to drink. <sighs> Diet Dr. Pepper. Yeah, a buddy. Okay, so again, we're going to have a value in here. Uh, this will be a slider value. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to say public float wanna be slider uh, slider UI element. There we go. So this wanna be slider UI element is what's going to change our, FS, our SFX audio. Now, interestingly enough, doing this is we don't have a way to clamp it, so we will need to create a clamp, but we're going to say update. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Um, float new slider value, and that will equal mathf.clamp, and we're actually going to clamp the wannabe slider element. We're going to clamp it between 0 and 1. 
And so the next thing we need to do is we're going to say, uh, S, oh wait, we need to create a for loop. So we're gonna say for int i equals zero, i less than sfx dot length, and we'll say i plus plus. From there is what we're going to do is we're gonna say um, sfx audio, i, because we need to get all of them. We're gonna say uh, volume, and that will equal new slider value. So, just like that. Now, this isn't going to quite work the way I want it to, and the reason why, because yeah, we're calling this, and it's equaling this. Uh, I may need to do, I may actually have this backwards, I think. I don't know. We'll find out. In fact, I'm just going to do it real basic, because I don't want to have to go through and debug a lot of this stuff. So, I'm just going to do it without a float. No biggie. So, we have this now, and we need to add it to the sound effects. So we're going to add this script in here, and we have our slider value, which this should, which we can only modify this between zero and one. Those dogs are such assholes. So we're going to have a bunch of things in here, and I do mean a bunch of things. Uh, the player she doesn't emit any sounds. However, her up oh, that's project. Uh, there we go. Her attack left and attack right, those do admit sounds. And so that's where it's going to be kind of complicated. Wait, no, these don't have sounds on them. What's emitting the sounds then? It's not that. Oh, it is the player that's emitting the sounds. Okay, so we have this audio source right here, and we're going to have a bunch of items in here. And we may not necessarily remember what items do and do not have these sounds. So how do you find out which ones do? I have no idea. So luckily, the search bar, you can't just type an audio source because that's actually a type of string and it's looking for a name that's audio source. But you can right click, find references in scene. Check this out. I don't know why it brought up Game Manager. I don't know why it brought that up. Oh, it's not bringing them up at all. So it should have actually looked up the references for the audio source, and I don't know why it didn't. You bastard, you're going to make me look for that, aren't you? Because I know T... And then mesh will bring up the render mesh. I don't remember what it is for uh, for audio source specifically. That is not what I was looking for. I don't care about the code. I'm actually going to have to really look into this because I don't remember how to do it. If you go into occlusion, you guys are going to see exactly what we're talking, what I'm talking about. So we have renders. And see how it changes it? T, render. Yeah. So maybe if I do audio source, add the T. There we go. It brings up everything. So it's just T colon audio source. And then it brings up everything that has an audio source with it. And apparently the background music is still in here. I don't know why. Oh, actually, Jaren, that's probably something that you added. So that's why this is bringing it up. But you can see that. No, I, I, uh, I'm focusing in the metric scene one. I'm in metric scene one. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't added anything to it. Oh. At least not today. So. Oh, don't ask me. 
So, yeah. but you can see that everything that has an audio source, so it's T colon audio source, or, you know, to find everything that has an audio source. But from there is what we'll do is uh, if we click on sound effects, lock this in, type in T audio source. I need to sneeze. Maybe not. I'm just, uh, I'd actually select all of these. I'd shift select all of these and then just bring them in where it says FSX audio. And this way I'll get all those components. Mm -hmm. And whenever I move this slider, we should see it modifying uh, all of the components. So right now it's at zero. So if I shoot, I should not hear anything. I don't hear anything. So let me set it to 0.5. Okay, now I hear something. Let me set it to one, make sure it's twice as loud. And it is. So there you go, it works. Let's see. Pretty easy, ain't it? Eh, you know. Once once I learn it and do it a couple of times, I'm sure I'll get the hang of it. But. Yeah, a lot of it's just practice and repetition. That's all it is. I mean that's the only reason why you see me making these scripts off the top of my head, because I've done it so much. It's like a lot of times I don't even think about it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that script for you now. So you have it. Uh, so is setting the turn colliders the best, uh, the best way to have it patrol or is there a, so it really just depends method? on what you're working on. Um, in this case, yes, it is. I'm not going to say it's the best, but it is actually a really, really good way to do it. And the reason why I'm actually also going to explain why it's not the best way. But for now, the best the reason why it is the best way, because if, say, there is a cliff or an edge or a wall, you can simply throw one of those in, tag it as turn, and the enemy will turn around. Gotcha. So why wouldn't it be a good idea? I can already see in my head why the script, like a bug that we're going to run into. But I want you all to think about why that would, like, why that's not a good idea. Uh, I guess if you want it to, uh, if you're, well. Okay, well, let's go and start looking in the fourth dimension, time. If the enemy is chasing the player and it runs past the turn left, so it will no longer turn around, even though the player is out of reach of it, it will still continue walking. And if there's a wall there or something like that, it will continue walking into the wall. Nothing is telling it to turn around. So, yeah, I guess you have to be smart about how you place it. No. Is what you do is you would, additionally to having it set up the way it is, is you'd want to set up something that says, hey, if you're chasing a player, like if, if it's chasing a player and it hits it, it needs to ignore it. That's the first thing you want to do, because if it's chasing a player and it hits that, it's going to stop chasing a player. It's going to turn around. Like a screw this kind of thing. So we yeah. want to ignore it so, we'll walk, so it will run through it and continue chasing a player. But then uh, if it stops chasing a player, it needs to go back to initial patrol state. And so we'll still have it ignore that tag or ignore that first trigger and have it set its destination to the one on the opposite side of that. So we'll run through that first trigger and then it'll get to the other trigger, and then it'll continue back with its patrol state. Gotcha. So when it comes to seeing things ahead of time, in my head, y'all know how I do that. No. Okay, well, I'm going to show you all how I do this. 
So I didn't know how he had it set up until I started looking here. Oh, we have a turn collider. Okay, sweet. And I'm also going to teach you all a little bit more about organizing because this is terrible. Um, that's partially my fault. I apologize. So we have our turn colliders right here and right here. Okay, so what is a piranha plant going to do? He's going to walk forward. He's going to hit this turn collider. And it's going to tell him to turn around. He's going to go back this way and hit this one. Turn around and come back and hit this way. Okay, that works. Y'all have seen it work. I've seen it work. Time for the what if. What if he's chasing a player and he hits that? Oh, well, let's go ahead and make him ignore it. All right. What if the player gets far away, uh, far enough away where he stops chasing a player, but nothing has told him to go back the other direction? Oh, well, we'll just tell him to go back the other direction. All right. Well, what about when he hits this collider? Then he's going to hit it, and then he's going to go continue off screen all the way over here until either A, he falls off, or B, he runs into a wall. You know, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, I need to create something where he ignores this one and sets his destination back to the one that's over here. In fact, I'm going to highlight that one so you can see it. Okay, so then after I ask myself another what-if question, well, what if there's something else that would keep the uh, chompy plant from, you know, going to this one? Okay, in that case, I need to set the destination to this one have him go into an idle state, and then back into his patrol state. And so he'll be back to the way he was. So even if he chases a player over here, he'll stop once a player is away from him. He'll turn around, he'll ignore this one, because now his destination is set to this one. And once he gets here, he'll stop, he'll go into an idle, and then he'll come back here and just continue back the way he was. Always yeah, ask yourselves, what if... Yeah, that makes sense. So that's how I see a lot of these bugs before I've even before we've even tested them to have them do that. Because right now, the chompy plant won't chase the player. And no, if that we one doesn't have to, I guess. Well, and that's the reason why I don't have a walk animation because I always plan on the chompy plant to be uh, like a stationary enemy. Hence the roots. <laughs> Whereas the others, I've always had intentions of them actually chasing after the player. Uh, right now, I can't... Right now, I can't get the frog to do his uh, melee animation. I don't know if it's the box collider or what. All right, well, give me one second because got to go use the restroom, so I'm going mm -hmm. to pause the recording and I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so you're asking, like, you can't get the frog to play its UI, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So uh, what do you mean by UI? I'm not – because UI deals with uh, user interface, so anything GUI, like the health bar, the transformation bar, all that's UI. <coughs> Boy, that was rough. A little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's technically not UI. It's just, for some reason right now, when you walk up to it, it doesn't seem to trigger the uh, melee attack animation. Okay. Which could very well be something that I just forgot to add. So, did you just grab the frog and drag him up in there? Uh, I did, and then I put the frog script that I have on it. Okay, so you're probably getting... You know what? I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, where's that script located? Enemy scripts? Enemy scripts, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to tag this on. I'm pretty sure you're actually getting an all reference exception. And I think it's because of this animator down here. So I'm going to walk close to him. He should play his idle animations. But then when I get close... Nothing. Oh, nope, he played... Yeah, mine's not even doing the animations at all. Even the idle ones. So I don't, I don't understand what is wrong. I with mine. really thought I would get because all I did was just drag the frog script on it. Um, let me think. 
Yeah, go ahead and share your screen with me real quick. I don't think this is one of your issues. It's one of my issues. So I'm going to pause the video. So my now... My previous one wasn't working, but Tyler's was. So I was like, all right, maybe. And Tyler's and mine was pretty similar. So I just went ahead and all right, looked so, over his. Uh, may I go ahead and use your screen share to record yeah. that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, right now we're getting a null reference exception right here where... Uh, on this line of code, correct? Yeah. Well, what is player? Does play, wouldn't player be our character? It is. But let's scroll up and see if we can find player in here. Okay, right there. You have go player, game object dot find. Then you're getting a player. So you're getting the transform component of that player. So that is correct. However, you also have another transform up there that is specified as player. And so, oh no, wait, that, that'd be correct. Because I don't know if you really need the component of that, maybe. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to go back into Unity. Let's see exactly what we're running into. Uh, so go ahead and hit clear. And hit play. I want to get all of the errors that we have. All right. So the first is the variable of SR, which is the sprite render. And then we have... Uh, yeah, and then see. it gives a null reference every time. Every time the, you hit them, right. So go yeah, ahead and stop playing. Let's go and start on that on trigger enter 2D. Uh, the one on the very bottom. That one, yes. So we have that. Okay, so what's going on is that actually needs to be inside the update. Gotcha. Because you need to do an update to check to see how close the player is. And honestly, you don't even need that script because that's actually part of the enemy damager that will be called. So what I want oh, you to do sorry. is... Just go ahead and delete it all together. Just the ones down there, yes. Okay, so then the next thing is we have sr.flipx... And you have those set to true and false. So that is correct. But what we need to do is when you go to the top where your start method group is. And we're doing sr.getComponent sprite render. So you're saying this is like I want you to get this component. However, that'd be like if someone were to ask you to wash your car. They say uh, your car. You're just like, what? what about my car? Yeah, your car. So that's why it's like, okay, what do you want me to do with this? So this is where you gotcha. need to say sr equals sr dot get component sprite renderer. So instead of sr dot no 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 keep the dot get uh, the dot just at the very beginning of it type in sr equals. So there is a reason. Uh, a lot of times you don't have to actually have that, and because it's actually part of its own. Uh, as part of its own thing. You actually don't even need the get component the way it's set up. I just do it as habit. Now I want you guys to get used to doing it as habit. Generally you could just say get component because it's part of its own self within its own game object. Gotcha. But for now we're just going to leave it like that. So go ahead and go back into Unity. And uh, we have the sprite renderer. Nope. We're not going to hit play yet. We need to do some no. stuff. So scroll down to your frog script. And so right down there we have SR. It's looking for a sprite renderer. So you're actually going to take your frog from the hierarchy and drag and drop it where it says sprite renderer. And you're going to do the same where it says T self transform on the very bottom. There we go. Now go ahead and hit play. All right. No errors. No errors. That is correct. So now is what we need to do is we actually need to look at uh, your animator window. So go ahead and click on animator. No, 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 the actual window itself. So at the top you see scene, oh, yeah, game, yeah. 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 Uh, click off of that and click back on frog. No, I need to click off a of frog and like click on oh. something else like player or something. So now click back on frog. That would be why it's not playing. 
So I just need to add the animator to, or the animations. Now, uh, the animations should already be in there. I'll tell you what, go ahead and go to window. Window? At the very top. You're going to go ahead to go down to animation and open up animation. Now, if that's not a head scratcher, I don't know what is. <laughs> so I'm actually going to move this out of the way because I want you to go into Perforce. I guess. <coughs> Boy, I had to sneeze. That one came out of nowhere. That was that sneeze I was telling y'all about earlier. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. All right, so go into Perforce. Okay. And inside of Perforce, uh, I want you to expand out animation. Enemies. Expand out, Frog. So you have all those animation clips. Yeah. Wait, that's on the depot. Click on your workspace. Okay, yeah, you definitely have all those. So for some odd reason... Um, it's just not calling them on the prefab. Well, no, more specifically, is within the animator, it's not calling them at all. And that's actually really, really interesting. So I'm kind of wondering if Neil and Tyler are having the same, are going to have the same issues. So what we're going to do is for your uh, animator. Mm -hmm. So you see my screen. Yes. So now my animator is going to be different, but essentially I'm just going to double click on the animator controller for Frog. So if you go back into Unity, you see your controller down there where it says Frog inside the animator, inside the inspector. Whoa. Yeah. Just double click where it says Frog. So now that we're in here, we actually need to drag up. Uh, you're going to have, you need to look for, I'm going to clean this up some. There we go. So inside your frog, yes. Go ahead and drag an idle up there. You bastard. It won't even let you do that. No, you don't need to do any of that. No. So is what's going on is... For some odd reason, your controller is not actually creating anything. And that's what doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, it already has the frog controller on it. But, because like right now, if you double click on that where it says frog, uh, down there inside the project, the square, yeah. So, see, your controller doesn't have anything in there. And that's why I'm just like, wait a minute. Because ideally, you should just be able to bring... Like, see how I can grab death and bring it up here? Yeah. I can grab idle down here and bring it up here. It'll say add. Uh -huh. And see, I can also do the same thing where I just double-clicked on this. I'm inside the frog. I can grab any one of these and bring it up here. That's why I'm just like, why isn't it letting you do that? So I think that's actually part of the project settings. Which means, right. you know what... <laughs> Probably Perforce. No, it's um, my project settings are different from yours, which means you'll have to get the uh, Force revision. Gotcha. So, is what I'm actually going to do is for my project settings, I'm going to. I'm also going to do the same thing with packages. So I'm going to check. Ah, I really don't want to do that though. But I'm going to, so I'm going to check these out. Okie dokie. And I'm going to submit both of these. I'm going to hit submit. So, yeah, what I want you to do is go into Perforce. Alright. And you're going to select uh, packages and uh, go into the depot. So, uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, right there, packages and project settings. If you expand one of those out, you should see a new update for them. 
There we go. So you're actually going to select both of those, get latest. Sure. Continue. Go back into Unity. Give it a second. Okay, now I want you to double click on frog. You bastard. <laughs> <sighs> I hate it when it does this crap. Let's try this. Let's try forcing the revision. May have to do it with the whole project. A thousand twenty six files. What is it copying? I have no idea. Pornhub? <laughs> it's two folders that it's doing it on and somehow it's copying a thousand files to the workspace yeah that's why I'm just like wait a minute that doesn't make any sense updated 979 wow. files in 47. <laughs> I don't get it I don't either so let's go back into Unity and see what happens you're going to want to double click on frog again Oh my god. Why? Click on the gecko folder. And double click on where it says gecko. Try it with the chompy. Yeah, simple, simple enemy. <sighs> I don't get it. I don't either. Because right now, it it's acting like there's nothing created for it. And I know that's just not the case. Oh, yeah, so it works for the Anole. It works for this one in Choppy, but it won't work for Frog or Gecko. Uh, so click on one of those, like the death, uh, just click on death, double click on it. It doesn't even have any. It has, it's showing nothing on it, it that it's just created, basically. So that's why it's not allowing me to open this because it's just seeing. Well, it's also why it's not allowing you to drag them up there. So it's almost like it's just empty. Yeah, it's just names basically with nothing attached to them. Right. Go ahead and uh, close out Unity and re. I want to say, say, say restart, but at the same time, I don't. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do, let's just restart it and see what happens. So I'm actually going to stop recording because it looks like this is going to be something a little bit more in-depth than what I want to cover. I gotcha.